Hi, I'm Mitch. Welcome to the workshop. Today I'm going to be starting I think, probably three videos on some simple Christmas gifts that you can make using just the cross halving joint. Uh, the first thing I'm going to be making is a trivet. Uh, trivet protects your lovely dining room table from having hot uh, serving dishes and pots etc put on it. So that'll be today's. Next time I'll be doing a frame. So first one had one cross halving joint, this one's got four and you could use this for either a photograph or you could put a mirror in the back of it as I'm going to do. So that'll be next time. And then moving on from four cross halvings to I think it's ten, I'm going to be using this piece of Sapili to make a small display a shelving unit to go on the wall to hold little knickknacks. So I hope you're going to find that interesting. Uh, certainly be good practice for your halving joints if you make some yourself. Right, well let's crack on with the trivet. Whilst I cut off a length of Maranti to use for this trivet, here are a few points to, to remember about sawing. Use a little V, either a knife wall or a V, to start your saw in, and use your finger to guide the edge of the saw. Just cut enough so that your teeth are into the cut. So you've established the line across the board. Then concentrate on the line you have down the front of the board to make sure you stay plumb. Additionally, you can use a tri-square stood on end on the bench in front of the bench hook. And keep the saw plate lined up with that. Steady strokes. Use as much of the blade as you feel comfortable with. Easy as that. Before dividing this batten into the two pieces I need for the trivet, I'm going to smooth it. And because it's quite difficult to smooth, I'm going to be using a 50 degree bevel iron in this bevel up low angle jack, uh, which added to the bed angle will give me an attack angle of about 62 degrees. So a lot more than the standard 45 degrees you'll find on a bench plan. Its length is not exact. It's um, a fraction under 16 and 3 quarters. So to get an exact halfway point, I'm going to put my zero point of the ruler at one end and then adjust the other end at a diagonal so that I get something exact. And I can, on the full diagonal, just about get 16 and 3 quarters. So now if I mark off at 8 and 3 eighths, then I know I'm spot on. I use a tri-square, hold it up against the line, tight on the edge of the work as well. That gives us a square line across there. Now because I want to maximise the length of both of these pieces, I don't want to saw one side of the line or the other, I want to saw right through the middle. And the only way I can do that accurately is if I knife that line, the knife right in the middle of the line, knife that across, then take a chisel and create a very tiny V down to that knife cut. So just push in then turn it around and do the same from the other side. And we remove a little V, and that's where we want to guide the saw. So support it on a couple of bench hooks. Saw into that V, sits nicely, and just start my cut. Now these obviously want to overlap in the middle, so to find the middle I'm going to place the one right up tight at the end of the other one, like so, mark it. Now I've just got to divide that in half, and I think I should use some dividers this time. 
So we're looking for something which is going to be roughly the right size to start with. Nearly. And there we go. So that's the middle of that section, which because we've taken one width away already, gives us the end uh, of the joint, that end of the joint. Then we just need the thickness added back again on here, and it's all done. So let's knife in at that length. And we need the thickness. So place that up tight. Little mark. So that's our joint. And of course, because we're doing the joint in the centre, I can take the other piece, put it together, line them up at the ends, and just transfer those marks to the second piece. transfer these lines down the faces. I'm doing it with a knife because I want the joints to be nice and accurate and knife just that little bit more accurate than a pencil. So roughly halfway down and we'll do that on the other side and on both sides of this piece. To find out how deep we need to make these joints, these cuts for the joints, we're going to use a marking gauge and I'm going to start with something which I think is around about halfway and on the end of the wood just make a little nick in the end grain, very easy to see, twist the wood round, test from the other side and hopefully you can see they're not quite touching so I need to make my gauge a little bit wider roughly to the middle of that gap. Try it again. And that's spot on. Now it doesn't have to be spot on as long as we mark from the same face that's going to be um, together when, it's, when the piece is put together. So if it's going together that way if we always mark from these two top surfaces or from these back surfaces when the parts go together it should be flush. So that one's going to go on there like that. I'm going to mark from these surfaces in between the two lines that we knife down the side. On both faces and on both pieces. So remembering this one, we're going to be marking from the side that doesn't have the um, knifed out marks on it. If I mark those in pencil, you better see, we'll all be able to see how, what we have to remove. Now pop two bench hooks together, I've got a gap that's big enough for me to see that joint on both sides. I can cut these together because it's exactly the same size. To start my cut this time though, I want the saw to be within this joint that I've marked out. So I'm going to just do a little V mark on the inside of the joint up to that knifed line. That gives me what we call a knife wall. Same on that side. Just sort down to the gauge line. I 
I saw the plate slightly down at the back so that I can turn my work round and just finish off to depth on what was the reverse side. You can also put a mirror behind. I can see in the mirror how far I'm going down on the back side. For thicker work, uh, you might find chiselling these out a little bit later would be more difficult and you would uh, saw two or three saw cuts through the middle. Again, just down to the gauge line. So to remove the waste in the joint, just find a chisel that's narrow enough and we're basically going to pare that away. So we're not using a hammer, we're just going to be pushing the chisel down against. So I'm going to use the, the bench hook because they're easily replaced. And I don't want to damage my bench top. Now you can look at the ends of the work, see which way the growth rings go and gain some sort of advantage as to knowing where the wood's going to split out. But if you just go close to the edge first of all push down lightly, you'll get some indication and there you can see it's going away so that's safe and I'm not getting anywhere near my gauge line by a piece chipping out on the back. And just slowly work your way towards the gauge line, slightly angled here just to be extra safe on the far side. And eventually I get to my gauge line, I can pop the chisel in that gauge line, just seat it in where the gauge went and take that last pairing cut. Now flip it over to the other side, again quite highly angled. gauge line for the last angled cut and now I just need to lower the little pyramid or little triangle that's in the center there so I'll set it up against the bench hook and then I can just pair against that a little bit at a time you could do this in the bench vise as well Gradually come down to the bottom and sit right on the edge, rest the chisel on where the gauge was cutting and work about halfway in, turn it around and come from the other side. few little splinters holding on where the saw didn't quite go deep enough. Just clean those off the edge. The second half of the halving joint is uh, paired away in exactly the same way. bit of glue and you've got a finished trivet but it'd be nice to just tidy it up a bit uh, add a few little design features to it so we'll go on and do that now so I'm going to remembering that this is the bottom side I'm going to put a slight curve in there so if it's on an uneven surface it's more likely to sit nice and smooth I'm also going to round over corner at the top and I'm going to round over the end. 
This short plane allows me to take plenty of stop shavings through the middle of the work and get uh, quite a nice smooth curve. Of course the other section has uh, the joint cut in it so by putting a spacer in there prevents the plane from nose diving down into the joint. Rounding over is uh, easily achieved with a block plane, skewing it to the work and making sure that the mouth doesn't drop over the sharp edge. And rounding over the top is just the same. Now I decided the curve underneath the base wasn't quite enough for me so I've just put both pieces in the vise together and I'm using a spoke shave whose uh, much shorter sole allows me to get a deeper curve. The only glue surface that really holds well is the long grain to long grain so I'm not bothering with glue on the end grain for the joint. Pop those together, clamp it for an hour and the job's done. I didn't bother with finish but if you do remember that it needs to be heat resistant and it works wonderfully. So why not give it a go and make one yourself. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.